Since buffalo days, Alberta rangelands have provided valuable grazing opportunities for ranching families and economic support for local communities. At one time, society classified rangelands as a kind of wasteland. Today, Alberta rangelands are valued more and more as a vital landscape with diverse plant and animal life and providing many environmental services. For rangelands to provide the benefits we enjoy from them year after year, we need to keep them healthy and we do that through our stewardship practices. In this presentation, we describe rangeland health as the ability of rangelands to perform certain key functions. Just like with people, the term health means all the parts that make up the whole are present and working. Healthy rangelands perform useful work for us, something we call ecological functions. These include maintenance of diverse plant communities, protection of soil from the forces of erosion, capture and beneficial release of water, cycling of nutrients and energy, and ultimately, all of this translates into the production of useful organic matter, something called net primary production. A wise rancher once said, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Measuring range health allows us to know what our management priorities need to be and to establish basic management goals to keep our rangelands healthy and functioning. The Alberta Rangeland Health Assessment Field Workbook has been developed for accessing the health of native grasslands, forests, and also tame pastures. This monitoring tool is now commonly used, not only in the ranching world, but by wildlife managers to assess habitat, to track the process of industrial reclamation, and to monitor recovery after disturbance events like wildfires. In this presentation, we explore its application to native grasslands. Like a visit to your doctor, rangeland health assessment is about recognizing the signs of health and any symptoms that suggest that corrective actions are needed. The field workbook provides five indicators that mirror the ecological functions of rangelands and give you an indirect read on any symptoms of reduced health. The doctor compares your health signs to the normal state of a healthy person of your age, gender, and build to see if there are any signs of illness. Similarly, we consult range plant community guides that will provide a useful reference for comparison purposes. Range plant community guides have been developed from all grazing areas of the province from thousands of range vegetation survey records. These classification documents provide a description of the major range plant communities that will be found in your area, both in terms of the potential and the ones that will evolve with different levels of disturbance say with light, to moderate to heavy grazing. These documents are easy to find on the web. Just Google Alberta Rangeland Health and you will find them. It's also possible to look for areas of native vegetation that are lightly grazed to gain some insight into what our reference condition is for the site in question. In subsequent videos, we will explore Alberta's ecological classification system in greater detail. So let's get started with the basics, the five indicators of rangeland health. And remember, you'll find the rangeland health field workbook a valuable reference that covers the procedure in greater detail. The first question is the most challenging. It asks you to identify the plant community, the dominant plant species that occupy the site, and to compare that to the expected or reference plant community. Native plant communities evolve within their environment and slowly change over time as environmental factors change. Plant species changes are predictable. Deep-rooted grasses that tend to be most productive and palatable are also the most sensitive to disturbance, and so they decline with increased grazing pressure. With heavy grazing, Shorter growing species with shallow roots and low growing plants will increase in abundance. An increase in unpalatable forbs and weeds may follow. The process of gradual replacement of one plant community by another is called succession. Early ranchers and range scientists recognize that by managing for later stages of plant community succession, 
the forge supply was more productive and stable. To evaluate the current plant community on the site, you need to know what the site potential is in terms of the expected or reference plant community, which would develop under light grazing disturbance. With some basic plant species knowledge, these successional shifts are readily observed and correlate with increasing levels of grazing disturbance. Knowing the dominant plant species will enable you to judge the plant community. First, we see the changes in a foothills fescue grassland from light to moderate to heavy and finally very heavy grazing. We can observe similar shifts in a mixed grass prairie community from light to moderate to heavy and very heavy grazing disturbance. The field workbook also provides the option to rate sites that have become modified to non-native species, where the species composition is 70% non-native or greater. This would include agronomic grasses like Kentucky bluegrass, smooth brome, timothy, and crested wheatgrass. Although plant communities are constantly adapting to their environment, significant short-term changes in the plant community do not normally occur unless caused by significant disturbances like continuous heavy grazing, high levels of recreational traffic, prolonged drought, prolonged periods of high precipitation, exotic species invasion, or from frequent burning. Healthy native grasslands normally have a diversity of plant species that vary in size, height, and rooting depth. These vegetation layers are called structure. Plant communities on any given ecological site will produce characteristic structural layers to make the most efficient use of the sunlight, water, and nutrients, and that means supporting a stable and productive pasture. Structural layers are easy to recognize in forested landscapes, but we can see them in grasslands too, including low shrubs, tall grasses and forbs, medium grasses and forbs, and ground cover including mosses and lichens. This question asks, are the expected plant layers present? Use plant community guides, photographs, or adjoining lightly grazed areas to evaluate structure. If one or more layers are absent or significantly reduced, score the site accordingly. For this question, it's important to simply look at the presence or absence of the structural layer, not the species. Also, patch structure may be a particular benefit of livestock grazing, which may improve habitat quality for a number of native bird species. There's an old stockman saying that it takes grass to make grass. The abundance and distribution of old grass as litter or mulch ranks second in importance. Each season, the grass that ranchers leave ungrazed as carryover, which eventually weathers to become litter, is a protective mulch that promotes moisture retention and nutrient cycling. A healthy watershed captures, stores, and beneficially releases the moisture associated with normal precipitation events. Live plant material and litter is important for infiltration, slowing runoff and creating a pathway into the soil. Litter reduces soil erosion from wind and water, reduces the evaporation of moisture, and also reduces raindrop impacts. A quick and simple technique to evaluate litter levels on your grassland is to place a one quarter meter square frame in a number of representative areas and then to hand rake the old grass accumulated from the previous year's growth and compare the volume of litter to the photographs in the field workbook. Values are provided for major range site types in each natural subregion in the prairie, foothills, and parkland regions. Collect the gray weathered material, litter from previous year's growth, not the green or yellow leaves that were produced in the current year. Rangeland soils take centuries to build and develop. Soil loss is a serious concern since erosion removes the lighter soil particles like clays, silts, and organic matter, which are most important to soil fertility and moisture holding capacity. Healthy vegetation cover protects the soil surface from the impact of raindrops and by slowing overland flow, enhancing infiltration and permeability. Adequate cover also slows the force of wind at the soil surface and protects the soil surface from erosion. 
The normal amount of sediment produced by water and wind erosion from a particular ecological site type is termed geological erosion. Managers strive to prevent accelerated erosion due to land management practices by keeping rangelands healthy, and that means maintaining adequate vegetation cover and minimizing exposed soil. To assess site stability and erosion, you first need to understand what the land surface looks like in a healthy state for the site type you are evaluating. Loamy soils tend to have very little bare soil, normally only a few percent. On steep terrain or with hard pan soils, considerable bare soil may be the norm. Consult a range plant community guide for your area or take a close look at lightly grazed areas in your pasture to get a better understanding of normal site stability. This is a two-part question. First, estimate the amount of bare soil on the site and subtract the expected amount for a healthy site. With every 10% increase in bare soil over expected, you will reduce the score. Next, look for signs of active erosion. The field workbook describes some specific types of soil erosion or evidence of site instability that you can look for, like are these present in a few locations or more widely distributed? Combine your scores for an overall rating of site stability. So finally, the last question asks about the presence of weeds on the site. By this we mean the invasive species that are alien to the plant community and that land managers class as noxious. More often, weeds invade rangelands where grazing practices or other disturbances have weakened the desirable species and provided bare soil, surplus moisture, and nutrients for weeds to gain a foothold. Consult the workbook appendix or your local municipality to confirm what's noxious in your area. So an important step in range health assessment is to estimate the cover and density of noxious weeds on your pastures. This is another two-part question. First, estimate the combined cover of all species that are considered noxious on your assessment site. The worksheet provides broad categories to make this task easy to judge. The second part is to assess density and distribution of weeds on the site. The density distribution grid in your worksheet will help guide your judgment. Match the appropriate density and distribution reference to your sample area and record the matching score. The final score will provide a practical measure of the level of weed infestation you have observed and the species that will require control measures. Now it's time to roll up the five indicator scores to form a cumulative measure of health. First, let's look at the big picture. A health score of 75% or greater tells you that your rangeland is healthy, that all the major functions are being performed. A score of less than 75% but greater than 50% puts you in the healthy with problems category. This tells you that most of the key functions are still being performed but there are some warning signs that need attention and these concerns can be addressed with fairly minor management changes. Scores of less than 50% put you in an unhealthy category. Few functions are being performed and urgent action is essential. Sustainable rangeland management is a long-term proposition and the particular value of health assessment comes when health assessed is repeated over time so that the manager can consider the trend in rangeland health. Do you need some help getting started with range health assessment on your own operation? Contact the Government of Alberta or a local conservation organization and invite a rangeland professional to visit your community and get a chance to practice some of the basics. Remember, rangelands are not wastelands, but a valuable natural resource that when managed for health and function, provides our society with a long list of values and benefits.